In the previous videos, we added a color map to 3D objects, either treating it as a texture or using vertex coloring. However, the issue associated with these color maps is that we always use the same color map and material to render the entire object. Even though the object looks nice, it's not realistic. For example, the tire of this car should be black, and the window glass should be transparent. In this video, I'll explain how to use various color maps and materials to render different parts of an object, making it look more realistic as displayed here. Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Practical Programming with Dr. Sue. In the examples presented in the previous videos, we used two approaches to add a color app to a 3D object, either treating the color map as a texture or utilizing vertex coloring. The challenge associated with these methods is that they always applied the same color app and material to render the entire object, making it impossible to distinguish different parts of the object. Let's take the McQueen Lightning car as an example. While the car with the color app looks impressive, the uniform application of the jet color app and the same metal-like material to the tires, window glass, body, etc., results in an unrealistic appearance. Today, I'll introduce an alternative approach, using diverse color apps and materials to render different parts of a 1998 Daihatsu Miracar. For instance, the tires will be rendered in black, the rims with a metal-like material, the window glass with a glass-like material incorporating proper transparency, and the interior with a distinct color and material from the exterior of the body. This approach enhances the realism of the car, as vividly displayed on the screen. In order to render various parts of the car with different color apps and materials, the first step is to generate a suitable 3D model. The standard STL file format typically represents a single 3D geometry containing the vertex data for a single object. To efficiently represent multiple parts of our car, it is more practical to use other file formats, such as the Wavefront OBJ file. In this example, instead of creating the car model from scratch, we'll download the car model from the 3D export website as shown here. This is a free 3D model that provides data for rendering a realistic car. You can see that the model is available in various formats, including Wavefront OBJ, 3DS Max, Autodesk FBX, and Colada. Now, download the OBJ file by clicking the download free link. Once the model file is downloaded, we'll place it to our project's asset slash folder. Let's now examine this OBJ file. First, import the Trimesh and OS modules, and then load the OBJ file of our car model using the Trimesh load function. Next, print out the content of the scene variable in the terminal. Here's the output. This indicates that the scene variable contains 13 independent geometries, representing different parts of our car object. Let's explore what parts are in these geometries using this code snippet. Running this code provides an order dictionary, which is a dictionary subclass that represents the order in which keys were first inserted. An order dictionary maintains the sequence in which keys are added, ensuring that the order is preserved during iteration. The order dictionary object contains geometries, each representing a part of our car object such as tire, rim, window glass, interior, car paint, or body, etc. Each geometry contains its own vertex data as well as the face or index data. Instead of using the key name to access the geometry data from the order dictionary, we'll convert it into a list, making it easier to access the data using an index. After understanding the content of this OBJ file, we can process its data to generate corresponding geometry data in the PYGFX rendering engine. Open the helper.py file and add a new function named carobgeometry. Here is the code snippet of this function. This function takes an optional argument scale set to 1 by default. It loads a 3D model in Wavefront OBJ format from a file located in the assets directory. It then defines two empty lists geometries and names, which will be used to store the converted geometries and their corresponding key names. Subsequently, the function creates a scaling transformation matrix based on the specified scale factor. 
Next, it iterates through each geometry in the loaded 3D model and applies the scaling transformation to each geometry. Furthermore, the function converts the scale geometry into a format compatible with the PYGFX engine using the GFX geometry from Trimesh function and adds the geometry and name to the respective lists. Finally, the function returns two lists, names, containing the key names of the geometries, and geometries, containing the corresponding PYGFX geometries. Additionally, we need to add three more colors, silver, gray, and orange to the color map data.py file in the common folder. Here's code snippet for these colors. The colors will be used to paint the body, interior, and lights of the car. Now, we are ready to render our car object in the PYGFX engine. The code will be based on the previous example for the teapot, which was presented in the last video. This code renders the teapot with a color app based on vertex coloring, as shown here. Since our car contains 13 independent geometries, we'll render it part by part according to the order specified in the order dictionary. Instead of adding objects directly to the scene, we'll group them together by defining a GFX group object. The group object can avoid code duplication when performing animation. For example, without using a group, we would need to perform the same rotation for all different parts of the car to animate our car object. However, with the group, we only need to perform the rotation once for the group. So, inside the animate function, we need to replace the object with the group. Next, we introduce two variables, body color and color map direction, which are used to easily change the body's color. We also define a variable called in color for changing the interior color of the car. Subsequently, we need to make some changes to the get geometry function. Instead of using a fixed geometry for the teapot, We'll set the geometry as an input argument so that this function can be applicable for different geometries. We can reuse the WObject class function without making any changes, but we need to modify the material class function. To simulate different materials such as metal, glass, and dielectrics, we will use the mesh standard material rather than simple mesh fong material. In addition to the keyword argument, we'll also pass extra arguments like opacity, roughness, and metalness to the material class function. Here is the code for this function. It is worth noting that the default values are specified for these input arguments. The opacity parameter can be used to control the transparency of the material. It takes value in the range of 0 to 1, where 0 means completely transparent and 1 means fully opaque. Here, we set its default value to 1. While the roughness and metalness parameters can be used to change material properties, both roughness and metalness can take values in the range of 0 to 1. The roughness parameter controls the microfacet roughness of the material surface. A lower value results in a smoother surface, while a higher value makes the surface rougher. Here, we set its default value to 0. The metalness parameter defines the metalness of the material. A value of 0 indicates a dielectric or non-metal material, while a value of 1 indicates a fully metallic material. Here, we set its default value to 1. Now, we are ready to create various parts of our car model. First, we need to generate 13 geometries by calling the car object geometry function from the helper module with a proper scaling factor of 0 0.15. We can adjust the scaling factor anytime to have a suitable default size on the screen. Next. We'll create objects in the order specified in the order dictionary, as shown here. The first geometry is for the red glass, representing the rear lights. We can remove this line of code and use the first element in the geometries list to create a red color app. We set the color app direction to 1, i.e., along the y direction. Actually, the color app direction doesn't matter for a pure red color. When creating the object for the red glass, we need make some changes. First, we need pass the geometry to the get geometry function since this function takes the geometry as input argument. So we add the geometries, zero here. Next, we need to specify the material. For the glass, we want transparency to a certain degree. The first parameter represents opacity in the material class function. As a first try, we set it to 0 0.5. Subsequently, add the red glass object to the group, and then add the group to the scene. Now, we can render the red glass object to examine its effect.
It looks too bright. We can make some changes to the roughness and metalness. Here, set the roughness to a small number like 0.1 and set the metalness to 0.9. To easily examine the parts, we now disable the rotation and will enable it later. Running the code produces results shown on the screen. It looks okay for now. We'll make adjustments later if necessary. The second geometry is for the orange glass, representing the yellow lights on the front and sides. We can copy this code segment and paste it here. Change the comment to 1, orange glass. Change the geometry to geometries 1 and set the color to orange. Let's render the object to examine its effect. It looks like we need to increase the reflectivity by enhancing the opacity to a higher value like 0 0.8. Let's check its effect again. It looks good now. Next, we need to render the clear glass part, which is for cover of the front and rear lights. Copy this code block and paste it here. Change the comment to 2, clear glass. Change the geometry to geometries 2 and set the color to white. We need to make this clear glass very transparent by setting the opacity to a very small number like 0.02. Let's render the object to examine its effect. It doesn't look very clear because we haven't created the light liners yet. We'll leave it for now. The next geometry is for the matte metal, representing the muffler, locks, and bulbs. Copy this code segment and paste it here. Change the comment to 3, matte metal. Change the geometry to geometries 3 and set the color to silver. We need a fully reflective metal by setting its opacity to 1. Let's render the part to check its effect. It looks good for now. The next geometry is for the mirror. Copy this code segment and paste it here. Change the comment to 4, mirror. Change the geometry to geometries 4 and set the color to white. We also need a fully reflective material by setting its opacity to 1 and metalness to 0.95. Let's render the part to check its effect. It looks good for now. The next geometry is for the interior of the car. Copy this code segment and paste it here. Change the comment to 5, interior. Change the geometry to geometries 5 and set the color to a color. For the interior, we need a material that behaves like a dielectric or non-metallic material. This can be achieved by increasing the roughness and reducing the metalness. For now, we set both the roughness and metalness to 0.5. Let's render the part to check its effect. For a leather interior with some reflectivity, it looks okay for now. The next geometry is for the chrome, representing the light liners and logo. Copy this code segment and paste it here. Change the comment to 6, chrome. Change the geometry to geometry 6 and set the color to white. In this case, we need a metallic material by setting the roughness to 0.1 and metalness to 0.9. Let's render the part to check its effect. Now. Our lights look more realistic, and we also have a nice logo. The next geometry is for the black rubber material surrounding the car. Copy this code segment and paste it here. Change the comment to 7, black. Change the geometry to geometry 7, and set the color to black. Here, we need a material that behaves like a dielectric or non-metallic material. This can be achieved by increasing the roughness and reducing the metalness. Like the interior, for now, we set both the roughness and metalness to 0.5. Let's render the part to check its effect. It looks good. The next geometry is for the rim, representing the wheels. Copy this code segment and paste it here. Change the comment to 8, rim. Change the geometry to geometries 8 and set the color to white. Here, we need a metallic material. This can be achieved by setting the roughness to 0.1 and metalness to 0.9. Let's render the part to check its effect. It looks good. The next geometry is for the second rim, 
representing the wheels. Copy this code segment and paste it here. Change the comment to 9, second rim. We can use the same color and material as we did for the rim in the last step. Let's render the part to examine its effect. It looks good. The next geometry is for the tires. Copy this code segment and paste it here. Change the comment to 10, tire. Change the geometry to geometries 10 and set the color to black. Here, we need a material that behaves like a dielectric or non-metallic material. This can be achieved by increasing the roughness and reducing the metalness. Here, we set the roughness to 0.7 and metalness to 0.5. Let's render the part to check its effect. It looks okay for now. The next geometry is for the car paint, representing the body of the car. Copy this code segment and paste it here. Change the comment to 11, body. Change the geometry to geometries 11 and set the color to body color and the color app direction to map direct, indicating that both color map and color app direction can be easily adjusted. Here, we need a metallic material. This can be achieved by setting the roughness to 0.1 and metalness to 0.9. Let's render the part to check its effect. It looks like a nice car already. The final geometry is for the window glass. Copy this code block and paste it here. Change the comment to 12. Window glass. Change the geometry to geometries 12 and set the color to white. We need to make this window glass very transparent by setting the opacity to a small number like 0.05. Let's render the object to examine its effect. Now, we have a very nice looking car with a green color displayed on the screen. You might wonder why we use vertex coloring even for the single color, as the single color can be simply specified in the mesh standard material. The reason is that the approach based on vertex coloring gives a more realistic result. Here is the comparison between these two methods in rendering the rear lights of our car. You can see that setting the single color directly gives a uniform, flat red color and lacks interaction with the environment, resulting in an unrealistic appearance. Now, we can turn on the animation by assigning the animate function to the before render callback. Additionally, we can change the body and interior colors. For example, changing the body color to silver and ink color to black produces a nice silver car with a black interior on the screen. Additionally, we can change the body color to a color app. For example, changing the body color to jet color map results in a car with a nice color app. We can also try the other color apps and color app direction as shown in on the screen. Now is our showcase time. We'll place our car model in different QMAP skybox environments. Here are some examples demonstrating how a realistic car with a more appealing visual effect is generated. Mm -hmm. 